Okay, we are almost towards the end of this series. Only a few things left. In this video, we want to create the user dashboard so we have easy access to our posts. Let's just start by logging in with a user. So here is our dashboard page and we want to create a table with the user's posts in that table. Let's go to our dashboard page component and start by grabbing the user's posts. First, we want to grab the user from our cookies and let's make this function async since we are going to use the await keyword and then create our user variable, set it to await get auth user. Then we want to query our database and get this user's posts. So first we need to grab the collection we want to query. So we will create posts collection. We will set this to await get collection and pass the name posts to get the posts collection. Then we will create our user posts here, which we will set it to await posts collection and add a question mark so that if this returned null, then this would be null too. But if that's true, we want to apply some queries. So I'm going to press enter and put these on different lines. We want to find not one, but as many as we have. So we use the find method and the filter we want to apply is based on the user ID. So each blog post in our database has this property called user ID, and that is going to be our filter. The value of this user ID is going to be the user ID in our cookies. However, that is a string. So we want to turn that again into an object ID. So let's say object ID from MongoDB and then create from hex a string and then pass user dot user ID to this function. And then we want to sort this and get the newest first. And this is similar to what we did on the homepage. We want to pass an object to the sort function and say dollar sign natural minus one. And lastly, we want to say to array. So we want to convert this to an array so we can loop over it in our markup. Now let's get to the markup. On the div, which is the first element, I'm going to apply the container class. Then on the H1, I will have a title class that says dashboard. And then we want to have our table if the user's post returned true. So first, let's say if the user's post was null by adding an exclamation mark before that, then return maybe a p tag that says fail to fetch the data. So since we are going to have a lot of markup, I will just put this on its own line. But if that's true, then we will have our table. So I will just push this down and up here, I will start with curly brackets again. And I will say, if the user post was true, in that case, we will have our markup. So I will add parentheses and right here, we will start by creating a table. All right, so within the table, let's have a table head and a table row, then a table head element. Let's set the width to three out of six. And the first one should say title. Then I'm gonna copy paste this, change these to one, one, and one. So that is the width for all these elements. And also I want to add SR dash only. So we don't actually want to see this text. This is for screen readers only. And the content should say view, edit, and delete. So that is our table head, quite simple. Then we want to have our table body. Now in the table body, we want to have a table row for each blog post in the users posts array. So again, let's add the curly brackets and say user posts dot map. So I want to call each element a post and we want to return some markup. So I'm adding parentheses here and I'm saying I want a TR or a table row. Let's add the key prop to the table row and we will set this to post dot underscore ID dot to string. Then within the table row, we will have a TD or table data and let's add the class name that is going to be the same as what we have in the table head. So with three out of six and the content of that table data is going to be post.title. With this information, if we go back to our website, you can see we have our table and also the title of each post. So this user has two posts and we can see the titles and maybe we don't need the container here. This is kind of silly. So let's go up and remove the container from this div. I think this is better. Let's continue. So that is our first table data. We want another one. I will set the width to one out of six. Also text blue 500. 
the content of this second table data is going to be a link component from next slash link. So make sure you import that. We just want to say view for the text. And for the href, we want to go to the detailed page of that post. So let's add backticks. We want to go forward slash posts, forward slash show, and then the ID. So let's add dollar sign, curly brackets, and then just copy the post ID and paste it down here. So that is our first link. Let's copy that and paste it under that. We want to change the color to green. And this is going to be for our edit page. So let's say edit for the text and just change this URL to forward slash posts and then edit instead of show. The rest is going to be the same. Let's copy and paste that table data once again. Change the color to red. And we don't want a link here. We want a delete button, which we will do it later. For now, let's just have the text delete. All right, so let's format the code. And from the top, we are just grabbing the authenticated user and, and then query our database to grab that user's posts. And then we check if that's true. We create a table, map over that user's posts array and create some markup for it. If that fails, we just show a p tag. So here is our table body. Back to the website, we can see our table. If I want to go to this page, I can say view. There we go. Back to the dashboard. If I want to update it, I can go to edit page and let's actually update this. So I'm just saying update it, submit. Back to the dashboard, you can see that is in fact updated. Now let's log out and register a new user. So with this information, I'm registering a new user. We are going back to our dashboard. And if the user has no blog posts, this is what we see. So if you're okay with this, you can leave it as it is, or somewhere in your component, you can check if the user's posts length is greater than zero, then show the table, otherwise show something else. In fact, you can make this whole return statement conditional. So just for the sake of practice, let's do this differently. I'm going to add an if statement here and say, if the user's posts was false, then simply return a p tag. So I'm just going to return the p tag and say failed to fetch the data here. Now let's have another if statement. This time we want to say if the user's posts length was zero, that means we don't have any posts, then return another statement. So let's just copy that and say, for example, you don't have any posts. But if both of these fail, then we can continue and create our table. So we don't need this check here anymore. So let's remove this and go down here. Let's remove this part. We also remove this parentheses and closing curly brackets and format the code. So we just have a div and then in the table body, we map over that user's posts and we continue. So I think this is a bit cleaner and more readable. So back to our website, we can see that this user doesn't have any posts, but if we create one, so I'm just going to add some text here and press submit back to the dashboard, we can see the table. And of course, everything is working the way it should. So let's update this, say update it like this, submit. There we go. It's updated. So that is with the user dashboard. And the next step is deleting a user's post.